Tom, you and I talked briefly about the 2020 election. Uh, as you know, President uh, Trump continues to call it stolen. Molly Hemingway calls it rigged. What's your take? Oh, I think President Trump um, was the technical winner of the election. Uh, mm-hmm. If you count the votes that should have been counted on Election Day properly under the law, he was the winner. Obviously, uh, it was adjudicated by Congress, however poorly, mm-hmm. and uh, President Biden was certified as the winner. Uh, but I think if the laws had been followed, uh, we'd be talking about the second Trump presidency. You've written a piece, we have it up on LarryOlder.com, called The Clinton's Russia-Ukraine Griff. Before we get into that, talk to me about Hunter Biden, Burisma, all the money he got from that, uh, that company. Uh, and what is uh, what is uh, Burisma doing now? I don't know. I have a feeling they'll survive the Russian invasion. Uh, color me skeptical. You know, one of the uh, interesting things about Burisma, at least my understanding of it, is that it's obviously a Ukrainian company. It's famous for being Ukrainian. But as, as we now have learned about Ukraine, uh, there are Russian interests in Ukraine that are powerful and Ukrainian interests in Ukraine that are powerful. Burisma fell into the Russia side of the ledger in Ukraine. It was a Russia-friendly company uh, run by a, a cabinet official associated with the, uh, one of the prior rulers of Ukraine that had fled to Russia. Uh, so when you talk about Hunter getting money from Ukraine, in many ways, it's just another way for the Russians, in my view, to take care of Hunter. And this is in addition to the three and a half million dollars the Senate, uh, a Senate investigative investigative committee found that at least one of his concerns received from the widow of a Russian oligarch. So the Russians were taking care of the of the Bidens. Uh, that's for sure. Tom, can you imagine if any of the Trump kids were deep in bed with uh, Russia, Ukraine, grift, as you as you pointed out, what the media would be saying? Yeah, on top of that, there's already a criminal investigation, presumably into what Hunter was doing there. There's tax investigations. Justice Department's supposed to be investigating this. I don't know how they can do it fairly or at least with the confidence that it will be done in a way uh, that people can have confidence in the fair administration and justice. And, you know, that's why they have these special counsel rules. And that's why we need a special counsel uh, for the Biden family corruption issues. Uh, our national security is at stake. Uh, we just can't, you know, the media wants to ignore it, uh, but it, it greatly complicates <laughs> certainly the situation in Ukraine. And I would, I would submit the corruption of Biden and his family is a contributing factor to the, uh, the terrible situation we're seeing in Ukraine. If you're Putin, you, take, you, you, you look at what your op- opponents are doing, and if Putin obviously concluded uh, that his opponents were corrupted and weak, because in part he knew uh, based on his experience with them in Russia and Ukraine. I mean, what, you, can't, you can't beat that type of experience and knowledge. He, he, he probably knew it because of the government's involvement, but obviously he reads the same newspaper as we do. And, you know, it's funny, a few years ago we uncovered emails uh, from the Obama State Department uh, showing, uh, bemoaning the fact that the Russians were trolling Biden over an- his anti-corruption issues in Ukraine mm-hmm. because of Hunter and Burisma. Uh, you know, they, they were making fun of him over this just before Trump came into office. And I tell you, you know, on top of that, you had that whole gang trying to use Ukraine and connections in Ukraine to go after Trump. And remember, they impeached him over the corruption there. My gosh, you know, and it all fed into Putin's uh, propaganda line that the Ukraine Ukraine was a vassal state of the United States and a plaything for the deep state. And certainly they acted like it and it doesn't justify the invasion. But my gosh, you know, wh- why why were we using Ukraine to target our own president of the United States? That's what the Democrats did in the first impeachment. My guest is president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fenton. Tom, I watched a lot of MSNB Hee Haw. I say so my audience does not have to. Hillary Clinton is on there going on and on and on about how Trump gave gave, uh, aid and comfort to Vladimir Putin. Your reaction? Well, the Clinton cash machine was in bed with the Russians. Uh, They received boatloads of money uh, in the form of speaking fees. 
Bill Clinton got a half a million dollar speaking fee from a front company for the Russians that later was tied to Uranium One. Well, wh why would you get an exorbitant speaking fee for that other than uh, essentially a kind of a laundered bribery? Tom, let's go over some of the specifics. You just now mentioned the $500,000 check for one speech from the Russian investment firm Renaissance Capital. What did Renaissance Capital get for their $500,000 check for one speech? Well, some would argue they helped uh, further secure the approval of uh, the Obama administration's um, uh, uh, the approval of the Obama administration for uh, Russia-related investments in Uranium One. Other Uranium One entities, connected entities, according to the New York Times, gave $145 million to the Clinton cash machine. And uh, I tell you, uh, that's where the money needs to be followed in terms of Russia connections uh, to try to influence public policy here in the United States. And the fact that the Justice Department hasn't done much with it at all uh, to me, is a scandal beyond words. What about all the money that has been donated to the Clinton Foundation? You talk about a New York Times report about a Ukrainian oligarch and steel baron steer between 10 and $25 million to the Clinton Foundation? It, it's You had the Ukraine oligarchs and you had Russians. And, you know, the question is, which foreign leaders, which foreign governments weren't giving money to the Clinton Foundation. She was running the State Department. You had the president, uh, President Clinton gave uh, a series of speeches, all of which were approved, virtually every single one of them. They raised tens of millions of dollars just from the speaking fees alone. And, you know, unsurprisingly, donations plunged after she lost the presidency and well, obviously wasn't in government anymore. And I think it's interesting now that they've uh, turned or they've uh, they're back in business. They're going to start having uh, these big annual events that were cash cows for them previously, uh, which suggests to me that uh, Hillary Clinton once again wants to use the foundation as a platform uh, for another political run. Now, this oligarch, his name is Pinchunk. Uh, you write that in 2013, the Commerce Department began an investigation uh, into him, complaints that he was illegally dumping steel. Where did that investigation go? Well, the fact you have to ask tells us it didn't go much of anywhere. Uh, and this is the problem. Even even if there were even if the allegations were unfounded because of the money he's giving people close to it, at the administration or in the administration, in the case of the Clintons, you know, it, it infects uh, everything the administration does. This is why the Clinton Foundation was this uniquely corrupt entity within our political system. I know other government officials have private foundations that have been really cash, you know, way stations for supporters to give uh, give them support, uh, but nothing to compare with the Clinton Foundation. Back to Uranium One, if we can. That was a Canadian uranium mining firm, had holdings here in the country. Russia wanted to buy it. They ultimately got it, didn't they? They did, and uh, they broke some promises related to uh, the production of the uranium, where it was to be sent. And uh, it was only approved when you have when you have foreign governments or foreign entities getting involved in national security related industries like uranium production. Uh, there's essentially a, a committee of senior national security leaders in the government, including the secretary of state of the State Department that's supposed to approve this. And they approved it. And uh, it was controversial when it was approved. And now we know there was all sorts of cash from folks connected to that deal funding the Clinton campaign, the Clinton Foundation. And, you know, uh, frankly, I think when it comes to the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton campaign, uh, you know, that's a dotted line between the two and, and, and practical purposes for practical purposes. The piece is called The Clinton's Russia Ukraine Grift. It's up on LarryElder.com, written by my guest, President of Judicial Watch, Tom Fenton. Tom, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. 